achievement on a monumental career. What a career it's been. Well, who's to say? <laughs> well, That's his last oh, game. You can't, you can't stop him. That, that is just remarkable. He just defies all logic, doesn't he? Every time you think of a grand final in, in VFL now, which is the old VFA, you just things revert back to um, the 1990 because it's just such a, an iconic game. People say to me, oh, that 1990 game, you know, that, you know, no one's ever done that before, come from that far behind. But, like, I, I clearly remember four or five games that, where we'd done that, and in, and in finals too. 30 years later, I have people that I don't even know talk to us about the best grand final we've ever seen is the 1990. I always feel it's one of the greatest grand finals you know, in the last 50, 60 years probably. But uh, to be part of that was, was great. Oh, and I remember one time it was because we had a corporate golf day coming up, rained out, went back to Nuts' house, a few beers, Joey Patterson was with us too. Oh, we'll put this on. Well, whole game, hairs on the back of your neck, um, almost a little bit teary and some man hugs afterwards. I could go anywhere and they, they will say, people can say, you played in that 1990 VFA, VFL Grand Final. And a lot of people saying one of the best finals they've ever seen. Honestly, I never for one second did I think that we couldn't win that game. To come back from six and a half goals down and the way we finished it, the way Chops kicked it, Swanee kicked his, it was incredible. So yeah, you'll, you'll never forget those things. Williamstown had had a really strong season that year, but the wheels fell off at the end of the year, so the end of the home and away year. So we lost three out of the last four. There's no doubt we weren't playing well. A lot of blokes were down, um, playing a bit out of position. We had you know, jackets and half back, we had ghosts and half full. We're trying to mix it up, get blokes back into form. And basically by losing that last round, instead of finishing top, having a double chance, having a week off, we went to an elimination final. It wasn't probably until the last quarter of the elimination final against Werribee, things started to click. We struggled for the first three quarters against uh, Werribee. They were in front. And then we kicked, I think, 10 goals in the last quarter. Uh, to them, maybe one. I think that was the catalyst for a lot of the momentum. I said, w winning that final well over the top of them did, and then did the, did the same in the subsequent final. And really got going. Guys started playing really good footy. The football that was played over that three week period leading to the grand final, we, we beat Werribee by 45 points. So I think it was a combination of, um, I think, belief, uh, fast-paced footy and, and certainly very potent up forward that we were uh, able to certainly uh, kick goals when needed. And that continued on against Coburg and we just put him away, Coburg away completely. We then played Coburg who had won the last two premierships, beat them by 45 points and then played Preston. Again, we just dominated from the start to finish and had a big win, a really big win. And guys were just playing sensational footy. So we were just flying through that period and and then, then it sort of leads into the, the build up to the grand final. Williamstown, the oldest club in the competition, joined the BFA in 1884 and has won 13 flags here at Princess Park. And we're underway, John Russo puts it down. That's Clark who wins the first tap, charging through Wayne Michelli. Bomb forward by Jack Aziz. And intercepting, it's Grant Smith. Take it easy, take it easy. And it started. Simon Clark involved there to put it to the wing, but Burton's taken the mark. And Malin, Horny, he's at the back. Rickman, can he find goal space? Minot under pressure, the shot is great from Greg Minot. First goal to Williamstown. Through Michelli, we saw that right from the first bounce. They're really under pressure for Springvale. It's Grant Smith for Williamstown, and Rickman judged that to a nicety. That's that set of bouncing. The second major for the Seagulls. Bouncing it to Minot, number two. Number three for Williamstown, without answer from Springvale. Very pass out to Minot, he's kicked two. With him, Dwyer. Minot's got lots of pace. Nice twist, on players on Cleverson from 60 metres. Ball held up in the breeze, the push by Michelli. Oh, he's made the mark. Uh, Wayne through Michelli. Kicks Williams down by Nickel. Loose ball, Swan under pressure, sees Johansson inside 50. Dummies around, scoring chance, a possibility, and a goal, a possibility. Number five for Willie. Springvale players around him. He's been
There was a real air of confidence. Like we just started like a bloody house on fire. And... Is against two. Oh, fine mark. He's not 100% as is. Bruce Morning. It's the first quarter that I constantly see the highlights of when I'm at uh, Greg Nuts by Nets house. That's all he puts on. And we've got out to a flyer. Nuts is on fire, people are going bananas. Steve Johansson, Rue, Smitty, they were just on fire. So we've played a really, really solid first quarter. 17 points up going into the first break. Pretty confident we're all going to have a fairly good day. I was thinking to myself, oh shit, you know, this is, it's, everything seemed to be going to plan. Quarter time, you couldn't ask for anything more, really. We were playing good footy, uh, we were in control, yeah, things were going well. So the second quarter, um, we're going into this feeling confident, obviously, from the first quarter, but uh, Chris Burton had broken a rib, I think. So we, uh, we sort of one man down going into that. And then basically, I think we've gone to sleep and everyone's just forgotten how to play for the next two quarters. You couldn't believe it, like we didn't touch the footy. No one could get their hands on the footy. Uh, it was incredible, really. They got hold of us and, and uh, kicked some good goals. Oh, Dudley at the back, dribbles it through. They sort of must have sat back a bit. They started to play better football and it was a little bit disconcerting how, how fluid they were and you know, getting it down to, to Robinson. And then they got a bit of a roll on and, and, um, and were, you know, they were a bit hard to stop. They hit the front halfway through the second quarter. We ended up having a pretty ordinary quarter. And we were three goals down, I think, at half time. Yeah, it wasn't good. And I do remember Randy was pretty pissed off at, at half time. We'd basically wasted a really good start. We had a bad second quarter. We thought we'd come out in the third quarter and you know, turn it around. And... Might have overdone it. Oh, there's a high tackle, a crude one by Michelli. Oh, and a oh. 50 metre penalty. To... Again, they just controlled from start to finish in the third quarter. and got a goal towards the end of the third quarter again. It's just amazing that how they dominate us for, for, uh, for two quarters. Just towards the end, we started to get this momentum and I thought, oh, well, there could be a chance. We'd kick one, they'd kick one. But we started to feel like if we get on top here, we're a chance, even though we're about 27 points down. But hey, anyone can, anyone can win from it when you're in front, mate. I said to Smitty, that's no good just rolling away and winning by, you know, 15 or 20 goals. Let's just take the foot off the pedal a little bit and then we'll just come home in the last quarter and make heroes of ourselves, so. You know, it's a very tense moment, three-quarter time in a grand final. They're so close. To this day, can't remember what Randy said at three-quarter time. I can't remember what Spud said, but they must have said something because we don't stand around for three or four minutes and just kind of look at each other. I can remember three-quarter time speech. The inspirational story must have come from, from the coach. We were down for the count. It was, um, yeah, think about boxing, we were, we were having a standing count. You know, the referees in front of us just doing these ones and you can see everyone looking at each other and I can remember Barry's arms flailing and uh, you know, the fact of the matter was at three quarter time we were 28 points down. We went into the huddle and uh, we regrouped. Randy just said we've just got to run. Going into the last quarter behind, uh, we knew we just had to go, go hard. He's virtually just said, you know, we just need to go out and play football. I'm pretty sure that Phil Malin made a comment at three-quarter time. 
We have won this game because we have worked harder when we haven't had the ball. 30 minutes more. I always look back now and say, you, you, as a coach, you would never say that. You'd never say that at three quarter time. See mine on a half back flank. They got Billy Swan in the pocket. Did they kicked the first goal in the last quarter. I think they did. Yeah. So um, it was an amazing game, really. The deputy vice captain running around and putting it through. Well, I guess that's exactly the start. Mailer would be hoping for, but Bynett. piercing kick. Oh, Smith gets underneath it. Rickman thought about going. Rickman's kick two. Can he inspire them? The monolith, Barry Round. Pretty ineffective stuff off to the running Smith. Finally there, clear. Smith towards Rickman. And Smith is there to spoil Hal at a chance. Oh, coming in like a train and giving a free away. Still brighten the game up. He kicks it. This, it's back to 27 points. He won't, though. It's back to 32 points. But will he still a chance? Gould spears it up. Johansson in the way. It's a crowded forward line. Leading to the pocket. Minot and Pastore. The kick is long. Oh, it could go through. It has. I think this could end up a thriller. Yeah, superb goal by Johansson. Always wanted to get closer to goal in the match so far, but he made plenty of distance with that kick. Pastore to Sleverson. He can kick huge goals. He's missed. The crowd's going. Should I look a little tired, Spring Vale? Just a couple of players there. Jeff's looked a bit weird. No doubting the commitment from both sets of players out here. Gould got it to McTaggart. Sleverson. Hemming them in, Spring Vale. Here's Michelli running out of the back pocket. Smith. Rickman's led into the pocket. He's 20 metres clear. Running straight at him was Mendy. The chance here for O'Connor. A goal! Oh, sensational, Peter. It's the Seagull faithful go wild. First for Marcus O'Connor, and it's 19 points the difference. I think Williamstown will get up. Oh, there's a big statement. Great spoil by Mendy. I think they will. Prosser got one high. Kicks without looking. In the way, McTaggart. Quickly on to Howlett. Straight down the middle they go. Out to our Sears, who's in the pocket with Nickel. Oh, Azil steals it. Gets one high, breaks clear, shoots at goal, and has put it through! Oh, Ross! Costa Nolas again! Oh, what a revival! This is going to test Springvale too now because Willie on a roll can be absolutely lethal. McTaggart was legged. McTaggart puts it out cleverly. Swan overruns it, recovers. A hand pass to Sleverson. Long he goes. Pastore in front. Nickel pushes him. And a magnificent mark! The pass. For Smith, space for him over the shoulder. He's just wide. Maloney unguarded. That's Cardinal right. errors made by Williamstown. And he's true with the kick, his third goal. Oh, just a steadier when it was required halfway through the last quarter. Bennett crowd in half forward. Brinkman! Bang goes the kick. Pastore, can he mark? Nickel, Smith with the injured shoulder. Out to Rickman, long way from goal. Another soccer kick cleverly. Oh. On the path of Sleverson. Oh, great. O'Connor on panel. Gould, Willie showing all their brilliance late in the final turn. Oh, over the top of brilliant score by Martin Nick. Sleverson on the wing. Bailen won't get there in time to put him off, but he want to hold him up if he can. Quick. Yes, they have to get it moving now. It's a desperate situation. Rickman judged that beautifully. Ian Rickman has to kick this goal if Williamstown are to win the game. They're alive! Well, Rickman's 24 minutes gone. 10 points the difference, Swan. Here comes as is crashes! Oh. Through with a magnificent and courageous mark. The mailer without the ball. Rickman out in front. Could just have the edge on his planet Smith. I took a mark out the other side of the ground and I was a fair way out and I had a shot and I was it just drifted across, but it made the distance. 
initially I thought I was looking for someone to give it off to because I wasn't 100% sure. His mark in the middle of the ground at Princess Park and the precision, the taking that moment by the scruff of the neck and the power with which he kicked that, that football and really at that point it was, you know, we were within, within a goal and come with the moment, come with the man. There was no clear better option and then I just thought, oh, when I looked I thought, oh, yeah, I reckon I'm a chance here. So. Ross, this has been a sensational game. And I think they'll win it too now. They're uh, really alive. They actually got the clearance and uh, got it down to Robinson who took, took the mark in front of Lloydy. All I can remember is he's coming in to kick and he was, you know, the pressure was on. It's a big kick for him. And the runner went to him and interrupted his, his running and then he went in and kicked it. He kicked it out in the full. Like just, I must have threw his whole thing off because it was just weird that, it, that the runner needed to tell him anything. It's out on the full. Well, that this time. Holding the yeah. ball. It's a good decision. The tackle was initiated before it was out of bounds. Gould's kick. Minot. Has he got some support? Michelli running straight at it. Taking over now. It's Billy Swan. Rickman's clear. 75 metres from goal. He must get around Smith. He's done that. McTaggart's the player. He's looking. It was like it was yesterday. Oh, two points down. I think it was a boundary throw in, I was on the half back flank and I thought if we win this contest I'm just going to bolt down to the forward line and Chops won a contest on the, on the wing and he's turned around and kicked it to me, I was at about the 30 metre mark and he'd done this little dinky kick that I had to run forward and um, mark it on the, on the 50 metre lines. We trained there on the Thursday night before the game, I had about 10 or 15 shots from that exact position which is unreal and uh, I just couldn't make the distance. When I marked it, it was just like this surreal feeling. Everything slowed in, it was like in slow motion, the crowd, I, I, I couldn't hear anything, I couldn't hear the crowd, I just knew, I said, I said to myself, I've got this game in my hand, and I looked around and Swanee was there on his own, so, oh, so I knew if he kicked it, we'd win the game. off to Bill Swan, who's not such a long kick, but in his seventh grand final, he can win the game for his adopted club, Williamstown. This is unbelievable, I can't believe, really, hard to imagine that it's all happened. Springvale seen at the game one. What a kick. What a kick for Bill Swan. What a hit! Oh, well, who could have predicted this? Have a look at the scenes. And Rickman did very well. He had to get around Smith as a little chip pass. And McTaggart, aware of the situation, 10 metres closer was Swan. And the best kick of his life is right through the middle. And they're two points in front. We've played 29 minutes. Well, Williamstown back to the death. We have a, another 30 seconds, I think. A double team round. Anderson knocks on. The experienced players coming yeah. out. We dominated the first quarter, they dominated the second and third, and we dominated the last, and we were just in front. That's how it sort of panned out. We were just lucky to be in front at the end, I suppose. In that era of, you know, 1985 to, you know, 90, early 90s, we were never really beaten, in my mind. It's, it's great how people still recall it, you know, um, and say uh, it was one of the greatest comebacks. You know, it's something that I'll never forget, unfortunately, or fortunately, I end up getting a tattoo as a result of it, so I've only got one tattoo. Um, but, you know, it's, it's something that, as I say, well, I'll remember for the rest of my life and is still talked about by a lot of friends and family to this day. It's, that game is an iconic game of VFA footy, you know, like, just to be involved and play a part in that game, you know, was fantastic. They were probably are, or not were, uh, some of the best years of your life. Love my footy, love that, love the club, love my, love my mates. It's just fantastic to be involved in, in the footy club and, 
and one of the greatest wins of all times. Unfortunately, you know, at the start of the year, we lost one of our great little teammates, Ronnie James, that you know, affected me, and I'm sure a lot of the players, you know, personally. Um, and during that year, we sort of we felt that we we're playing for something, and, and I guess during the finals, you know, we sort of, I guess, felt him looking down on us and. and and sort of pushing us over the line. If, if you were, in, you know, coming into that grand final, we knew we just had to win. And, and I guess, I guess he was there. In life, you're never out of it. You, you know, you're always a chance. Never give up because you just never know. So that was a never die sort of situation. Never give in, and you just never know what's possible. It's a, you know, been a privilege to play in two premierships, uh, the '86 and '90. The 1990 was probably the most exciting game I've ever played in. Um, uh, and it's for the, the spectators, the club. You know, the memories will be forever and our friendships will be forever. You know, I, I'm so blessed to be able to say that I played for the, for the Williamstown Football Club.